yeah, I got into the drink, I got into the, the, the shenanigans of, of the ways of life. And before I knew it, I found myself in a very dark place, to say the least. I was a very disturbed individual. Um, and, and I think what also helped that point is I was somebody who had everything in terms of materialistic stuff could possibly, you know, money could buy, million pound house, the Porsche, the whole, you know, that, that kind of dream. But I also was in a position where, well, I have all of this stuff and hold on a minute, I'm not happy. You're meant to be happy when you have this stuff. You're meant to feel amazing. You're meant to feel contentment, apparently. And I didn't. I still had this empty void. Um, and that was a confusing time in life. So that's also what led to the drink because I thought, oh, okay, well, let's make it exciting. So I started to add alcohol in, in amongst my days of being interviewed, my days of going on television, never in concerts, mind, um, but just been with the band and just to get through and, and make it a bit more edgy, I suppose. I enjoyed the edginess of it all. And you mentioned the all. fact that you'd become a very dark individual. And in fact, you played on this to a large extent. And taking you back to when you were 14, you, you had your first encounter with a Ouija board. That's you right. then had two or three other ones. And then you started getting these, what must have been terrifying apparitions, mostly at night, but sometimes during the day.